It's been several weeks now since we freed the Mohawk prisoners from captivity. I had hoped their leader might make contact, but there's been only silence. My men grow restless. They want to know what comes next, and I do not have an answer. Lee alone remains active, pursuing leads, however slight. He stalks the city streets and scouts the bordering woods, hopeful that he might make contact with one of those we saved. There was a woman there that night. It was she who helped the others to safety. If we can find her, I believe I'll have my answers. So, I watch and wait, hopeful that my true mission might finally begin. Charles, any luck finding a mystery woman? Word is she's been stirring up trouble just outside the city in a town called Lexington. Well, then that's where we'll begin our search. I'll meet you there. Go 
for the sturdiest and most seamless battle. Have you found her? Uh, she's made camp not too far from here. Excellent. Well, the sooner we're done, the sooner we can get out of this cold. I am afraid I have some bad news, sir. Oh? Braddock is insisting I return to service under him. I've tried to beg off to no avail. No doubt he's still angry about losing Pitcairn. To say nothing of the shaming we gave him. Do as he asks. In the meantime, I'll work on having you released. I'm sorry for the trouble. Not your fault. We're too late. Fire's only just been snuffed. Snow recently disturbed. She's close. Olex. Tracks are fresh. It must be hers. Seems she took to higher ground. Out of the snow and into the trees. Charles, before he grows suspicious. I can handle things from here. But, sir! But nothing! Go! Stop running! I only wish to talk! I am not your enemy! Please just hear me out! God's woman! Only let me speak!
in the head? Me? Haytham? I come in peace. Why are you speaking so slow? <sighs> Sorry. What do you want? Well, your name, for one. I'm Gadzi Zio. Well, pleased to meet you. God, God's day. Just call me Zio. Dio. Zio. Now well, tell me why it is you here. Where did you get this? From an old friend. I've only seen such markings in one other place. Where? Well, it is forbidden for me to speak of it. I saved your people. Does this mean nothing to you? Look, I am not the enemy. Close to here, there is a hill. Meet me there, and we'll see if you speak the truth. That town hosts soldiers who seek to drive my people from these lands. They're led by a man known as the Bulldog. Edward Braddock. You know him? He's no friend of mine. Every day, more of my people are lost to men like him. Then I suggest we put a stop to it. Together. What do you propose? That we kill Edward Braddock. But first, we have to find him. I don't trust you. I know. Uh, wait here. A Mohawkman is likely to raise suspicions, if not muskets. This is hardly the first time I've been amongst your people. I can handle myself. I hope so. You can't stand being quartered there. The endless crashing of the waves. The sting of the salt in my eyes. And the goddamn gulls shrieking and shitting everywhere. You're sure that's where we're going? Aye. The Bulldog's putting together another expedition. That's what they're calling them now. Expeditions. Aye. Smart too. Slap a fancy name on something and all evil is excused. Did I hear tell the French are readying to move on our positions? Wonder what Braddock intends to do about it. He's already left for the advance camp. 
I'll wager our little holiday here is just about ended. We'll be marching south before week's end. Must be odd splitter. Oi! Where are you going, Cully? Me? No, the other cock robin. Well, I, uh, I was leaving. Oh? And now? Well, now... I'm going to feed you your teeth. And you were worried I was going to be the problem? Braddock's camp when you're ready. Use the snowstorm to mask your approach. Having second thoughts? Hardly. But I'll have to approach this carefully. Go on then. I'll keep watch from here. in the wagon. 
in a full inventory. As you wish, uh, let's see. Two barrels of salt, 12 pounds pork, 10 pounds of beef, seven dozen eggs, 16 wheels of cheese, none of it French, don't worry. Five bottles of whiskey, a couple dozen new uniforms, boots, and leather for patching, blankets to cut feed for the horses. What else? That's it. That's all there is. There will be no truce. Damn it! Why, George? What reason did he give? He said a diplomatic solution was no solution at all. That allowing the French to retreat would only delay an inevitable conflict. One in which they now have the upper hand. There's merit to those words. As much as I hate to admit it. Still, can't he see this is unwise? It doesn't sit well with me either. We're far from home with our forces divided. Worse, I fear Braddock's bloodlust makes him careless. It puts them at a risk. I'd rather not be delivering grim news to mothers and widows because the bulldog wanted to prove a point. Where is the general now? Rallying the troops. And then it's on to Fort Duquesne, I assume? Eventually. The march north will surely take time. There's a copy of the plans in the command tent should you wish to review them. I think this will be ended soon. I tried, John. I know, my friend. 
I know. That map will surely be of use. I need to find it. What news? Braddock has left to rally his troops. They're marching on Fort Duquesne. It'll be a while yet till they're ready, which gives us time to form a plan. No need. We will ambush them here near the river. Go and gather your allies. I will do the same. I will send word when it is time to strike.
in the cold, cold ground. Here, here. Hard at work, I see. How did you? <laughs> it is time. We set up camp to the north. Meet me there. Gentlemen, let us away. First it was too cold. Now it's too goddamn hot. And humid too. It's a right slump, I tell you. Right. To say nothing of the mosquitoes. Warm weather and bugs are soon to be the least of our worries. What? You mean the bulldog? <laughs> Please. We'll be in that one's beef soon enough and onto the next. Where's your boy Lee gone off to? Returned to finish out his service under Braddock. I imagine the Bulldog's none too pleased after the stunt we pulled. Pleased to spin a tale of my incompetence and beg forgiveness. He is away with words, especially when it comes to flattery. I expect he'll be welcomed back with open arms. Which would give us a man inside. Precisely. Unless you've underestimated our enemy. If I have, Charles will sense it first and make his escape. He's more clever than you think. I see you've been busy. All these men are from many different tribes. United in their desire to see Braddock sent away. The Abenaki, the Lenape, the Shawnee. And you? Who do you stand for? Myself. What would you have me do? Well, you'll help the others to prepare. Follow. Everything all right, sir? Just savoring the moment. No doubt, many wonder why it is we've pushed so far west. These are wild lands as yet untamed and unsettled. But it shall not always be so. In time, our holdings will no longer suffice. And that day is closer than you think. We must ensure our people have ample room to grow and further prosper. Which means, we need more land! The French understand this, and endeavor to prevent such growth. They skirt around our territory, erecting forts and forging alliances, awaiting the day they might strangle us with the new state built. This must not come to pass. We must sever the cord and send them back. This is why we ride. To offer them one last chance, the French will leave, or they will die! Now is the time to strike. Wait. To scatter the expedition is not enough. I must ensure that Braddock falls. I'll see sure to try again. I'll disguise myself as one of his own and make my way to his side. Your ambush will provide the perfect cover for me to deliver the killing blow. We await your signal. There, in front of us. The wood's too thick. At this rate, it'll be days before we reach Duquesne. We should follow the river instead. We are near 2,000 men. One scout is all they need to know of us. And then what? Swiftness would serve us better.
anyone call this forest home? With the French pushback, there will be a lot of opportunities for us up north. Sir, you are grateful to have served. General! I'll not tolerate doubt amongst those I command, nor sympathy for the enemy. I've no time for insubordination. He paid for his treachery, as all traitors must. If we are to win this war against the French, nay, when we win this war, it will be because men like you obeyed men like me and did so without hesitation. We must have order amongst our ranks and a clear chain of command. Leaders and followers. Without such structure, there can be no victory. Am I understood? Edward. Not so fun on the other end of the barrel, is it? Look out! <laughs> Sir! Where are you off to? I never took you for a coward, Edward. Come on, then! Such arrogance. I always knew it would be the end of you. Is the end of you. Don't. Hurry before he gets away! I said go! I don't deserve this! You're a hypocrite, Hatham! I'm sorry, Edmund, but you forced my hand! Death opens a door. It's nothing personal. Well, maybe just a little personal. Been a pain in my ass after all. But we are brothers in arms. Once, perhaps. No longer. Do you think I've forgotten what you did? All those innocents slaughtered. And for what? It does not engender peace to cut your way to resolution. Wrong. Whether we applied the sword more liberally and more often, the world would be a better place than it is today. In this instance, I concur. Farewell, Edward. Now I 
have upheld my part of the bargain, I expect that you will honor yours. Honor me. seem disappointed. I thought that I held a key that it would open something here. This room is all there is. I expected more. What do they mean? It tells the story of your Zizu came into their world and shaped it for what life might come. She had a hard journey, fraught with great loss and peril. But she believed in her children and what they might achieve. And though she is long gone from the physical world, her eyes still watch over us. Her ears still hear our words. Her hands still guide us. And her love still gives us strength. You've shown me great kindness, dear. 